I don't even know how to start this video because, you, as you can see, I'm uploading on UFD Tech again. But for the fourth freaking time, our channel went down for what was supposed to be seven days, according to a YouTube community guideline strike that they issued against our channel just a few days ago. It was based on a short that we did about somebody who used ChatGPT to get Windows keys for Windows 95, something that is just funny. It's just hilariously absurd. I didn't think much of it besides it's a cool thing. Let me promote this video that somebody else did that's really a neat implementation of how to violate ChatGPT. It was a news story. It was not me endorsing it. It was not me condoning it. It was simply me covering the fact that it happened. I come to discover when we get this community guideline strike for harmful or dangerous content. Meanwhile, let me remind you, we're talking about Windows 95. Once this happens, I discover that the individual who created that original video also got a community guideline strike for their video for cracking a operating system that has now been defunct for quite some time and i'm going to talk about why that's ridiculous in a second but i kind of want to make this video to just i don't know vent a little bit because i'm just I'm so tired with YouTube and how they choose to treat our channel and the arbitrary enforcement that they seem to have on things that make absolutely no sense to me. And I think objectively, they made the wrong call here with our channel time and time again. And they're continuously putting me in a position where I'm uncertain. Am I going to lose my channel for seven days? Am I going to lose it for two weeks? Or are they just going to arbitrarily decide one day that there's three videos that I made that they don't like and then my channel's gone forever. Not great stuff. I don't like being in this position and YouTube could have fixed this at any point, but they are choosing not to for whatever reason. But you will notice I am uploading this on UFD Tech. That is because I'm scrolling through my creator studio on YouTube and I see this comment pop up, the short that doomed UFD Tech. And it's on the video that YouTube removed. And I'm like, how is somebody commenting on this video that doesn't exist? Appreciate you, Ahmed, you really helped me out. And turns out they restored the video. You can see the, that it happened sometime between two and 3 p.m. yesterday. But the Funny thing is, I don't have an email about it. I don't have a decision from YouTube waiting for me, telling me that anything went wrong. The only thing that I have sitting waiting for me in my YouTube backend is it telling me that I got a community guideline strike at 10.08 p.m. on May March 25th and at 6.02 a.m. my appeal was rejected. But when I click into the guideline strikes, the only thing that is sitting there is this freaking Android on a Nintendo Switch video that is still community guideline strike my appeal is submitted. It's not even denied. I'll get an email after the review is complete. That never happened. We're coming up on four years here. I'm just freaking frustrated. I love this platform. YouTube, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of creators' opinions, is the definitive place for creators to be. It not only pays better than most platforms, it gives you a more authentic community. It gives you greater access to discoverability. I've been able to build and maintain a business. I was able to provide for my family in desperate times thanks to the community that we've been able to build here on YouTube. But time and time again, they just continuously put me in harm's way. And I learned my lesson back in 2020 when I had to make these two videos back to back when I learned, okay, YouTube, even in a desperate time for me, this was right after we had just moved back to the United States. My son was in severe medical condition. We were losing my employees due to the fact that they couldn't get work visas because that got canceled due to the pandemic. We were going through the pandemic. I had so much weighing me down. And in that moment is when YouTube took my channel away. And I, from that moment, resolved, okay, I can't be in this position. This is ridiculous. I love this platform. I think I am doing nothing wrong, but I need to create something better for my family and my team and my future here as trying to be a content creator. It's, it's not going to be, it can't just be exclusively on YouTube. And it's not, it's no longer that way. If we had been gone for the entire week this time, I would have been bothered because I feel like it's unjust. I feel like that there was an actual 
incorrect decision made, but we've diversified into other platforms. I have other methods of earning money. We are on Twitch, we are on TikTok, we are we have Floatplane, we have Patreon, we recently launched a coffee company. We are good and stable as a business to where if we lose YouTube for a little bit, it's not a big deal. So I just also want to position this to content creators. If you're on YouTube or you're on TikTok or Instagram, if you are making your money from a single service, consider diversifying because what I did was nothing wrong. I have not made a single video that violates YouTube's harmful and dangerous content policy. I did not do anything wrong with putting an operating system on a Nintendo Switch. I did nothing illegal. I did nothing that's harmful to anybody. I made videos about tech. I'm a nerd making videos in my basement. <laughs> and the fact that this happened to me means that it can happen to anyone. It's strange. It's very strange. This face I made the other day when I made the video for the second channel, that's how I legitimately feel on the inside. I don't know what's going on. YouTube also doesn't seem to know what's going on. They changed their system. When I submitted my appeal for this Windows 95 video, I couldn't even state a reason for why I was appealing any longer. They removed that option. So I have to send my appeal into the void. It got rejected in what I would consider way less time for anybody to reasonably look at it. And then when I ended up tweeting about it, saying, hey, this is kind of nonsense. You're holding me down for talking about somebody getting keys for a 30 year old operating system. They said, unfortunately, Unfortunately, our policy team confirmed that your video will not be reinstated. We understand this wasn't the outcome you were hoping for, but please review our policy on harmful or dangerous content to avoid this in the future, which I did. I looked at this and harmful, dangerous acts or pranks, clearly not what it's talking about. Weapons content, clearly Windows 95 maybe is used in the military industrial complex somewhere. Digital security content. This is probably where they think they're getting me. Instructional theft, hacking, bypassing payment for digital content or services, and then I think phishing or crypto phishing they didn't get me on. I'm believing that it's probably the bypassing payment for digital content or services that they're really trying to say I did wrong here. But number one, I didn't show viewers how to get unauthorized access. I didn't show people how to do diddly. I covered a news topic. I talked about the fact that somebody else did it. This is like, and I'm not saying I'm a journalist, but it, it's similar to if somebody's covering a story about arson, you can't say they lit the fire. But the second issue I would take with that is that it says it usually requires payment. You can't pay Microsoft for Windows 95. Are you freaking kidding me? And then again, the other two of instructional theft or hacking, it's instructional theft videos or demonstrating how. I never did any of that. I never told people, hey, kids, this is how you get ChatGPT to give you a free Windows key because I, I know you shouldn't do that. Number one, pay people for software. I'm okay doing that. I'm not actually a big believer in piracy in my personal life. I legitimately have like a very anti-piracy mindset for myself. I legitimately think if I can't afford software, I shouldn't have it. And if it's not available in my country, well, then I don't need to watch it. Like this idea that I have to have access to all these things, I don't hold that belief. I think that if I can't get access to something, that's fine, I will just go without. That's my stance on piracy for myself. I understand that there's conversations that a lot of other people have for their reasons. My belief is not prescriptive towards you, but the fact that I hold that and I will gladly go out of my way to pay Microsoft for Windows keys, and then I cover how somebody went and did something with ChatGPT that ChatGPT is not supposed to be used for and commented on, hey, this is kind of ridiculous. It boggles my mind that it ended up being a problem. So I tweet this out and then as a response to my tweet, they gave me two updates basically saying that you violated the harmful or dangerous content policy. I just went on a, a tweet thread saying, hey, listen, obviously I did not do this. I never showed anybody how to do it. It was not instructional. Microsoft doesn't sell Windows 95 keys, so it doesn't usually require a payment. This is not a thing. Number three, if the mere mention that somebody did this was a problem, well, then why is this video of why all of these ones is a valid Windows 95 key? That endorses it just as much as I did. It shouldn't be taken down. It's a legitimately helpful historical look at how operating systems used to work. It's a great video that Stack Smashing made. It deserves to exist here on YouTube. But if I'm at risk for covering this, why isn't anybody else? And it's the same thing with the Android on the Nintendo Switch video. I made that video 
I think a month before Linus did. I like I I know I was one of the first to cover putting Android on the Nintendo Switch. I didn't invent it. I didn't violate DMCA. It was my physical hardware that I had access to that I then did. And I showed as much instruction as whatever Linus has in his video. It's unfair enforcement of arbitrary rules that really just don't apply. And so I'm I'm just here baffled. Right, I didn't get a notice that my channel was reinstated. I didn't get any sort of indication that YouTube was wrong. And in fact, every single time YouTube responded to me, it was them on Twitter just giving me this canned message that I violated this policy, which they tell me to review, which I reviewed in full and I did not violate. It's that simple. But I have learned a few things from the last time I tangled with YouTube on this. Number one, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. I'm deleting this video. I don't need to have this on my YouTube channel. The last time I kept a video up, I, I won an appeal, YouTube sided with me, then they struck it again, I won another appeal, then YouTube sided with me again, and then I had to appeal it for the third time, and that's when it this freaking video is just sitting in this amorphous purgatory state on my YouTube channel where I can't get it to go away. Which brings me to the other problem of YouTube said that they're gonna roll out a course that I can take to get rid of my warning. They said they were rolling that out in September. I was in contact with a YouTube rep who said that they were gonna look into why I don't have access to it back in November. I followed up with them in January, no response. As soon as my channel got taken down, I followed up with them again. Still don't have a response. So I'm glad I have my channel back, but I still have this freaking albatross hanging around UFD Tech's neck about a video that, listen, if you don't want me putting operating systems on devices that don't want it, I'll never do it again. I don't have a problem changing my content here. I don't have a problem deleting it, but if you're gonna give me a way to get this out of here, please do it. YouTube, give me the ability to take the course to get this dang video gone. I think, I mean, this video is mostly just me ranting. I'm, I, I was frustrated for most of most of this week. I was defeated and like just confused and felt like I was lost in the void. And I like, I've been here before with YouTube. I know what this feeling's like. I did this dance four years ago with them. And thankfully I learned my lesson from back then, but I still have this weird thing that I have to do. But as always, like I just also want to say thank you to you, the audience, the amount of support y'all showed on the video that we put on our second channel. Thank you. The amount of people that showed support on my tweets and called YouTube out for their nonsense. Thank you. A big thanks to Gordon Ung from PC World who said, keep fighting it like that. I honestly needed that because I was like, I feel like I'm just shouting into the void. What's the point of even talking about this? YouTube's never going to fix it. I just need to eat my seven day uh, timeout and then get back to it. I didn't have a video ready for today, so I just wanted to talk about this. And then also thank you for all of you who bought the coffee. It was our second biggest day ever besides the launch of the coffee. Thank you for using code SAVEUFDTECH. It gave you 13% off because I found out I can't give a 12.5% discount code. So you saved a little bit more money than I otherwise would have. But I'm so thankful to, to you guys as the audience, but I'm also like still really thankful to YouTube for giving me this platform. The fact that when we do an annual charity event to raise money for my son's rare disease, we've raised half a million dollars in five years. That's absurd. That's more than a lot of big channels raise on their charity events. The fact that all of you have connected with us and relate to my story that I was vulnerable enough to share with you and you've been with me on this journey for the last five to six years of me traveling the globe, coming back to America, trying to reestablish, having to move, having to send my team back and to, like really trying to figure out where is my place. I have no support system that I've built up because it all crumbled under my feet at certain points, but I know that I have my audience that I can at least come back to you and enjoy tech with you. So you've been here supporting me through that and YouTube has given me that opportunity. I'm so gosh dang thankful for this job. It's not lost on me how ridiculously amazing and flexible this career can be, but also at the same time, how volatile and strange it can all be as well. And so I don't have a point. I just have thanks. I have gratefulness for you, the audience. I have gratefulness for YouTube and I just wish that they would do better. I'm grateful that everybody supported our coffee 
the, the code save UFD tech is still good until when the seven day expiration period was supposed to expire. So until Tuesday, if you want to pick up for yourself or a loved one, a bag of rare brew coffee, a portion of the proceeds go to Syngap Research Fund, which helps secure my son's rare disease, which, oh man, like that's the, that's the thing that I always come back to is like, this channel's not my life. YouTube's not my life. Social media is not my life. I, I have an amazing family. I have, I have three kids. I have a lovely wife. I have a, a son with significant medical needs that once the clock strikes five, I leave this office and I go, I go be with them. I, I have a bigger purpose here than uh, talking about processors and graphics cards and Apple this and Twitter that. Like, all of that's kind of, like, I, I enjoy it, but at the end of the day, like, None of this is really what matters. Like the, the hot news and the, the videos that we can do about tech, it's all fun and it's all good and it's enjoyable. But it, at the end of the day, I, I love my family. I love the people that I am in active friendships and relationships with. And I really enjoy that YouTube allows me to make the fullness of that a reality. I can take a week off to go be with my son in the hospital and know I don't have a boss who's going to yell at me for taking PTO. I don't have to ask permission, hey, can I take a, another week off to go on a Make-A-Wish trip with my kid? I can just do those things. When my son has to go to urgent care because we think he has strep and he can't tell us, I, I can just stop working and go. The, the amazingness of YouTube and the flexibility that this career gives me is just so fantastic. <laughs> And I love it. I love it so much. And I, I love it for the reasons that it gives me to live a full life outside of this screen that you're watching it on. And I'm fully rambling right now, but I am thankful. I appreciate everybody. I wish YouTube would be more clear. I will change my content to fit your arbitrary policies. Please just let me know what they are. Please. I won't talk about ChatGPT doing naughty things ever again. I, I won't do it. I won't talk about putting software where it doesn't belong. I won't talk about emulators. Mm -mm. None of that. It's freaking, it's all not worth it. Because what this is for me is a job for my many employees. It's a flexible work environment so that I can actively properly take care of my family. It's also a method where we can fund research and development of new treatments and cures for my son's rare disease. And that means so much to me. So I don't like when it's taken away. I get a little flustered, but I'm thankful. The fluster comes out of the fact that I want to be here. And I don't think there's another platform that offers what this has. I'd look at everybody's suggestion. Check out this site, check out this site, upload here, do that. None of them offer all of the whole package that YouTube has. I have no problem uploading my video to multiple different platforms, but the idea that I'm gonna get more than 10 views on whatever website you're gonna recommend is, it's just, it's not there. Okay, I'm fully done rambling now. I appreciate you, YouTube. Thank you for letting me have my channel back. I'm, I'm deleting my video. You can't find it. Don't try to come after me for that one. If you find another one, guys, uh, I'll make a video on the second channel saying that UFD tech's gone again because YouTube won't give me access to the course to get rid of the Android on Nintendo Switch community guidelines strike that I appealed that they won't actually approve the appeal for and it's just sitting in freaking limbo and I'm stuck here waving my arms like a madman in my basement. Please buy the coffee. It's really good. It's for a good cause too. Code save UFD tech. Save 13%.